Welcome to Scrapple TV. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pulling up the IMDb. <laughs> Welcome to Doctor Who. I'm your moderator, John Zito, joined by Tony Trove. Hey there. And Joanna Cook. Hi. This is a uh, podcast where we watch Doctor Who episodes and try to explain them to our friend Tony Trove, who is a uh, novice at Doctor Who. A noob. A noob, if you will. Noob. Um, today we'll be talking about the Peter Capaldi episode, Deep Breath. Uh, it's a very highly rated episode for a new episode on IMDb, directed by Ben Wheatley, uh, written by Stephen Moffat, starring Peter Capaldi as the Doctor and Jenna Coleman as the Faithful Companion. Also, uh, Neve McIntosh, I guess, is that, um, is that the Lizard Lady? You click on her name, we'll find out. Okay. Well, I wouldn't <laughs> recognize her outside of the makeup anyway. Oh. Yep, she's the lizard. So, um, original air date was uh, August 23rd, 2014. This is a fairly new episode. This is our first regeneration episode that we're covering. Trove. I thought you. What do you? What happens? No, you. You tell You're us what tell happens. Us That's what the happens. premise of the podcast. Um, Trove. What do you think happened this week on Doctor Who? The Doctor Who? is is no longer Matt Smith, and it is now Peter Capaldi, and a dinosaur appears. Um, I guess in part of the. Because he was regenerated, I guess it got all spit out together. Um, I had a hard time following this one, even though I did enjoy, <laughs> I did enjoy it. But I really have no idea what was happening. There was a an interspecies lesbian kiss, which was awesome. Um, <laughs> what are you looking at me for? <laughs> there was um, lots of. Uh, robot people or steampunk robot people, which I thought was cool. Um, I don't know. I, 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 there's a lot of jumping around. They go to the future. So, so a dinosaur appears while Peter Capaldi's character is being created. They go to the him and the sidekick go to the future to solve this. Um, there's a trio of uh, of of mutant people. <laughs> who um, are cheeky, as one would expect. And um, uh, then there's the lesbian kiss, which was cool. And then they, uh, then there's the robot people who, if you hold your breath, they stop moving for some reason. And, uh, and then Matt Smith appears at the end, which was, which <laughs> was my least favorite part of the episode. You did not, uh, you did not appreciate the cameo why, of Matt Smith? Why if he regenerates, Riddle me this. Why, why, if he can regenerate, why is he? Why is the old Doctor Who doctor still able to appear? Oh, he made the phone call in the past, knowing that Clara was going to not trust his new self. So he made this call. He made this call right before he was going to regenerate, and was like, "I'm going to call Clara." Clara's probably in the background somewhere when he made the call and he calls her in the future to then be how, like how come he said who's that on the phone and he knew it was he knew that he, he was, was being just, cheeky he, was being cheeky. he knew more cheek. more cheek um i thought his cameo was so lame i liked I it i liked it so though they but that means they were so they both exist in the same time period because how could he call, he can't call from the future he yes he to, can no he can't he, he is, has a tardis that can do these things no, but if he's making a phone call, he has to be in the same time period as the, the phone call can't try. His, his, the it did. Uh, Joanna, would you say that uh, Trove's description of Peter Capaldi's first episode is accurate? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, what, what did he get wrong? Well, what he did get right was the kiss, which he brought up a couple times. <laughs> the um, kiss between the lizard and the... Her companion. Yes. No, I think she kisses Clara. No. At some point. Doesn't she kiss Clara? Oh, she... she... To give her the air. No, isn't that her assistant? Oh, it's her assistant. You're right. You're yeah, right. somebody's writing some slash fiction. <laughs> Caught Wait, me. So if you're a time traveler, do you automatically get a companion? No, they're all, they're all aliens from oh, Doctor Who's past. <laughs> so Strax, who is my favorite character. He's um, the guy with the head. Yeah, the baked potato. The baked potato. Um... 
And then you you also have and I I forget the the lady's name. Madam, Jenny. Madam Vostra. The lizard lady. Vostra sounds about right. Madam Vostra and Jenny. They're married, but Jenny has to pretend to be her maid. Because. Because. It, it's unacceptable, I guess, in BBC <laughs> in the 1800s to be a lizard um, interspecies. Wait, was it other than the future? No, they're in the 1800s. Yeah, this episode takes place in. Uh, yeah, that's what you got like wrong. 1800s England. Uh, oh, I guess they are in the past. Does the whole episode take place in the 1800s? Yes. How about the end? When they travel back in time to the present day. Shut up. <laughs> Who brought the dinosaur? Didn't, the doctor brought the dinosaur. I believe the TARDIS, um, uh, or the TARDIS was swallowed by the dinosaur before the opening credits of this episode. Mm -hmm. So it starts like in media res, uh, the Tyrannosaurus Rex is uh, coughing up the, the, the TARDIS in the, in the Thames. Yes. That, I see. How come the London, how come everybody was okay with this dinosaur just terrorizing? It, you, well, they kind of weren't. They were very cool with it. They're like, oh, oh, that's a dinosaur. <laughs> well, then you see like Madame, Madame oh, Vostra, that cheeky dinosaur. <laughs> well, anyway. So you, you, even though you didn't understand what the episode was about for the most part, you did enjoy it. So yeah. uh, what did you think of Peter Capaldi as the doctor? It seems, a little, I, I think I said this about Matt Smith, but I also feel now that I, this is what it should be like, that it's, this is what a time traveler person is and he's, he shouldn't just be silly and in love and all cheeky. He's when the show when the show premiered, the doctor was an old guy as well. He was, he was kind of irascible and. Uh, I mean, he's two thousand years old. He's a crazy person. Why should he be or a crazy alien? He he shouldn't be flirting and dancing around with with young British babes, you know. It's, <laughs> oh, in mini skirts. Well, mini skirt. Let me step in. The doctor is only about like a thousand years old at this point. I think, he's I, thought, two. I think in this episode he says he's, he's two thousand. He says he's two thousand. I think in the, I think in this episode. Oh. They well. they like age him up finally. You uh you got me there. <laughs> you win. <laughs> it turns out you were right too. Uh, Peter Capaldi does have a uh, Italian grandfather. Boom. So he is the first. He is the first <laughs> Italian <laughs> Doctor Who. You win. Trove. How many troves would you give this episode out of five? Five being uh, you enjoyed it a lot. One being you enjoyed it not at all. Uh, I would give it a four. <laughs> yeah, I liked it a lot. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. How about you, Joanna? A four trove episode. Wow. Um, I really like this one. I have lots of questions. I would say between three and four. It's just because I've seen so many great episodes that, like, I know this is probably the, this is the best so one that you've five, seen. Three and a half. We could say three and a half. I think we can give half heads, tro half troves. Half troves. A three trope. and a half troves. I don't like that it's that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to change it? Do you want to change I'll it change from troves? It to, I mean, let's change it to cheeks. Okay. So you give it four cheeks, and Joanna gives it 3.5 cheeks. 3.5 cheeks. That's actually a little bit more gross. Okay. So I think that does it for this episode of Doctor Who. Uh, join us next time uh, when we will be talking about the Christopher Eccleston episode, The End of the Earth. End of the world. Join us next time. <laughs> <laughs> Join us next time when we will be talking about the Christopher Eccleston episode, The End of the World. Beam me up. <laughs>